In our earlier lessons, we had seen how vectorization can help you in speeding up your calculation. We had also seen a demo where we just computed dot product of two very large vectors and we saw there was a difference of 500x uh, in the computation for vectorized and non-vectorized calculation. In the previous lesson, we had seen that uh, how we can use vectorization uh, on the gradient calculation for logistic regression and we had got rid of inner loop where we were looping over the different features but one loop was still remaining that was looping over the all the training examples so we will uh, get rid of that also in some future lesson first of all we will uh, see how to vectorize the forward pro forward propagation step of logistic regression and uh, just a brief recap uh, neural network calculations can be divided into two parts one is forward propagation where we calculate the values of uh, different values and then after we have computed a final target value uh, we back propagate that is we uh, come backwards one step at a time so if uh, uh, v1 depends on v2 depends on v, v1 and v3 depends on v2 then this means v3 is some function of v2 so we can find a gradient of v3 with respect to v2 that is del v3 over v2 similarly we can calculate gradient of v2 with respect to v1 so this way we do the back backward propagation or back propagation and we see what is the impact of these input variables on the final output and uh, this we had seen in the last video. In this video, we will see the forward propagation step and how to vectorize that. So uh, if we are doing forward propagation on logistic regression, we need the value of z, uh, which is calculated using this formula, w transpose x1 plus b. And similarly, z2 is calculated as w transpose x2 plus b. And z3 will be calculated as w transpose x3 plus b and so on if there are n features we will do it for uh, n output and then we get y predicted so this activation is same as predicted y which is sigmoid of uh, z1 and similarly predicted y2 is uh, sigmoid of z2 and so on so let's vectorize it first uh, we will cluster the we will group the input values into a matrix so this is the first input and this is a vector of size n cross 1 and then we stack with it x2 and so on so we do it for all the m inputs so this becomes n cross m vector this is n and this is m now uh, just like x we will create a matrix z or vector z which will be the corresponding z values small g and this is capital g so z1 these are some scalar values z1 g2 zn and this capital G denotes this thing and uh, what will be this so first element is G1 is W transpose X1 plus B and second will be W transpose X2 plus B all the way up to W transpose X3 plus b so if you uh, you see that b is a real number which is added to all the elements of this vector so we can write it as w transpose x i w transpose x2 x1 and so on w transpose x n it should be m here and this is also m plus uh, another 
row vector of same size b b b so this is 1 cross m this is also 1 cross m so we can add these things so we can write it as w transpose and then this x x matrix that we wrote here uh, plus real number b and why this real number let's see in a minute first let's see what is this this w transpose so this w transpose is a row vector because w is n cross 1 same as x uh, so this w transpose will be 1 cross n so 1 w for each vector w1 for x1 w2 for x2 similarly wn for xn one weight corresponding to each feature so this is w transpose and this matrix x is this matrix n cross m so we have x1 x2 all the way xn so this is n cross m so 1 cross m multiplied 1 cross n multiplied by n cross m gives 1 cross m so the result of w transpose x will be this row unit wise w1 multiplied by first feature of first training example first uh, set first input set and w2 multiplied to x21 similarly each each of the n, n elements here each of each n features of first example will be multiplied with w and we will get w transpose x1 similarly the second value will be this row multiplied by second x2 that is x2 and so on so this term is equivalent to w transpose x and now you can write it as bbbb also but uh, what python does is that if you are adding b to a vector a row column vector this automatically expands python will automatically expand this b to this form this row vector in order to match it with the first part so this is called broadcasting in python we will talk a little more about it later adding a scalar to a vector automatically uh, expand this scalar to this vector of same size with repeated value of this so uh, now you see how you can vectorize calculate all the g values at the same time without running a for loop so here you have to run a for loop for i equal to 1 to n g1 equal to this g2 equal to this and so on here you will just write z capital z equal to w transpose capital x plus b and you are done and now we need to calculate this a1 a2 and so on that is prediction for first example prediction for second example and so on so what we have to do we have to define the same way a as a1 a2 all the way up to a n so a m so this capital A is a row vector of uh, the different predicted outputs so how we can calculate it in vectorized fashion uh, one way is to run a for loop and for each value of z apply sigmoid on that but we can do it in a vectorized fashion also if we uh, implement a sigmoid function which instead of taking a real value takes a vector in this case in z and it returns a vector so if let's assume we have an implementation of sigmoid which takes as input vector and outputs vector so it's a vectorized output so we can write a equal to this sigmoid z so now we have calculated all the predictions for all the uh, training set without using even a single for loop now let's see how we can implement this i will not give a complete implementation but i will give some idea so in normal sigmoid you feed in some value 
and what it calculates sigmoid z is defined as 1 over 1 plus e raised to the power minus z so whatever is the real number it gets it calculates e raised to exp of minus z adds 1 to it so let's say v1 equal to 1 plus np dot exp minus g and then uh, return 1 over v1 so here z is a real number so if this is the implementation we will need to uh, do it for all the values one by one but we can have let's say a vectorized implementation and it takes this capital G and which is uh, m cross 1 cross m row vector m denotes the number of training examples so what we can do we had already seen that in numpy we have if we apply np dot exp to a vector then it will do element wise, wise exponentiation so implementation will remain same and if we do 1 over some vector so now this is a vector of same size as z so this is again 1 cross m so if we do 1 over v1 then it will do element wise uh, division element wise 1 over v1 0 1 over v2 0 it will form a row vector or column vector what is the input size so in this way you can uh, define a vectorized implementation of sigmoid and you can use this sigmoid to calculate the capital A now in, in the next lesson we will see how to uh, remove the for loops from back propagation in logistic regression